And for the inner one, it's actually a good idea to keep it at sharp because if you change it to arc, uh, you might have problems with really small objects. Guys, when we started, everything looked like garbage. This is what it looked like. And now it just looks like trash. Look at this marvelous, amazing trash. Anyway, you know how it works. There's a link in the description for the entire video and like, subscribe, blah, 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 blah. just move on to the video, Wasik, let's go. All right, so let's begin by fixing the window. So if I press numpad three, it puts me over here, but what I want is control three. So when I do control three on the numpad, it will put me in the opposite view. I am gonna enable these. Apparently this add-on decides to disable itself every time Blender starts and just select one of these windows and get into edit view. In the wireframe mode, I can select these bottom vertices. And since we duplicated this window with Alt D instead of Shift D, this will select this side as well. So move them up. And I just want to be right outside of this bottom edge. So not, not completely, not something like this. I just want to be right outside it. So there we go. Then do the same to this edge and the top one. And finally, what I can do is I can move this window to the right a little bit just to close up this gap. And that will also create a gap in the middle, but that's a gap that I want there because, you know, it looks like, yeah, these aren't attached. There's a gap in between, the windows can open. All right, so next up, I'm gonna shift right leg on this thing and that will move my cursor over there. So I don't have to manually move items. Add in a cube, scale it down. All right, so then I'm gonna press the period key on my numpad and that will you know zoom me into this thing and then i can get out of edit mode Control 2 and scale this thing down along the z-axis scale it up along the y-axis scale it down along the x-axis that looks nice enough i'm gonna select this front face press i to add in a loop cut just a tiny bit just like that Press I to add in another one, make it smaller, but then scale it along the Y axis. So it comes here. And now we're gonna try to make this shape. So let's try and look at that shape first. I'm gonna zoom in on it over here. So this is a really low quality picture, but basically it's coming down all the way down here and then it's going back up. So it, this is actually pretty thick over here. All right, so let's unhide everything and select this. I'm gonna get into this view and then press the backward slash or forward slash. What is this key called? Okay, press that and then press E to extrude this thing out. So just a tiny bit over here should be enough. And then I'm gonna extrude it again. And this time I'm gonna move it down. Just move it back a little bit again. And then extrude it once more. And this time I'm going to go into wireframe mode, select these vertices, sorry, select these lines. So it's actually selected right now. You can see, oh, wrong view. Move them down and make it say like this. I am looking at both this and this. Now this doesn't need to be perfect because this is a really tiny part of the picture. So I'm just going to extrude this out, move it over here scale it down okay so for this next bit i'm gonna use another tool and it's really amazing so with these four vertices selected what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna duplicate it and move it over here and just place it say here i'm placing it on this line and then duplicate it again and just place it over here okay and then i'm gonna select all of these together and i'm gonna first delete these faces that they have so Dissolve faces, sorry, delete faces, my bad, only faces. And then select all of these again, right click, bridge edge loops. And finally, you can add a face on the top, press F to add a face in, and there we go. I'm gonna exit the isolation mode, and I'm gonna try to figure out why I can't see the image over here. Is it because the camera is hidden? Yes. Okay, so just for the final touch, just keep this top edge selected, Shift E, and drag it out a little bit, and also scale it down. But scale it up in the Y direction because, yeah, it's not pointy, but it's still, you know, thinner. 
All right, so I'm going to add in a cube, scale it down, add in, say, two subsurface divisions, move it down over here, scale it along the z axis, scale it along the z axis even more, move it over here. Okay, so let's scale it down further. Okay, so for this thing, I'm going to origin to geometry, come over here and add in a mirror modifier. I'm going to turn on clipping and, turn, and flip it to the y-axis so it's mirroring it in this direction. Hey, I forgot to talk during this bit. So I'm not doing much. I'm just scaling it down, extruding the edge outwards and then just playing with the size a little bit. So yeah, just your usual hotkeys, E to extrude, G to move it, S to scale and stuff like that. I'm going to select this face over here, move it in. By the way, I extruded that one face out and then scaled it up. So, extrude it out again. Then scale it along the x-axis once more. Extrude it out, scale it along the x-axis and just make it smaller. Sorry, just the x-axis. Oh, and I'm also going to need one loop cut at the bottom and just move it ever so slightly into this thing. And also back here, I'm gonna select one face, shift G and do normal. So it will select all the faces up here, press I. This one, I'm gonna add in one loop cut, select this and this, press I twice. Extrude it up, just like that. Don't really need to worry about how it looks, it's just really far away anyway, because if you take a look at this, well, you can't even see it. Yeah, it's going to be just like that, so don't worry about it. But I still want some detail over here, so I'm going to select both of these, press I, sorry, press I like this, and extrude them in. And this outer edge, I'm going to extrude that one up. Alright, so that's good enough. Then I'm going to select both of these, shift D, move them over here. Actually, no, I'm going to select both of them, alt D, and move them here. Oh, that was actually pretty good on the first try. Yay. Okay, so next we need this thing. And let's take a look at how it's attached to the wall. So it looks like there's a circular thing here, and then the handle just comes out like this. So that should be really easy to do. I'm going to add in the circle first. Rotate it around, rotate it and do it like this. I'm going to make it smaller and G shift X so I can move it along this edge. And I'm going to try to make it, well, try to match it over here. Fill it down. And yeah, that looks nice enough. And then I'm going to get into top view. And I'm going to get into isolation view as well. So I only see this one circle and nothing else. And for now, I am just going to press E to extrude it. Oh, sorry. For now, I'm just going to press F to create a face and then E to extrude it just a tiny little bit. And press I until it feels like it's the same size as this thing. Okay, and now we're going to use the same trick over here. So I'm going to delete this face and I'm going to select these edges. Okay, and I'm going to move this up. So along the x axis, still it reaches this bit. I'm going to duplicate it again, rotate it by 90, and this time I'm going to try to place it over here. Okay, so there we go. And then I'm going to duplicate it once more. And since we know that this is a straight line, so G, Y, and move it all the way over here. Okay, so I can also do the same thing to this one. And then just select all of these together along with, oh, this is not right. You have to duplicate, sorry, you have to select it when you're in edit mode. Sorry, wireframe mode. Move this here. Okay, and then select all of these. Select this one. Right click, bridge edge loops. And this time I'm going to increase the number of cuts to three okay actually i'm going to increase the number of cuts to five over here because this really needs a nice turn 
Uh, let me see if I can increase the smoothness. Sorry, decrease, this act decrease it actually. Yeah. And then I'm going to get into edit mode and delete all the useless cuts. So top view. Not these ones. One, two, three, four. Since these are all straight, uh, they don't really need to be cuts. And the same over here. So one, two, three, X and dissolve edges. There we go. And finally, I need to add in a face at the end. And I'm just gonna bevel this, even though I shouldn't really need to. Okay, so right click, shade smooth, and auto smoothing. And for the tissue, um, it's actually fairly simple. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this, duplicate it, scale it in all directions except Y. Scale it something like that. Okay, and I'm gonna try to match this inner one first. So scale it down actually. Move it down here. Scale it along the y axis. Okay, G, Y, scale it down. G, Y. I believe that is it. Just a little bit to the left, making sure. So I'm hiding it with H and then unhiding it with Alt H. Okay, then press P to separate this. There we go. Select everything, press E to extrude, press S to scale, and press Shift Y to only scale it in those two directions. And I'm just going to match the size of the tissue roll. And then select all of these faces and G, Y, and move it all the way here. Oh, and as you can see, it actually didn't reach it. So we were right with this one. Okay, so there is one flap over here on top of this. And to be honest, we should probably just make it right now. Shift D, G, and Z, my bad. G, Z, move it up. Move it down again, and I'm going to duplicate this, but I'm also going to parent this to this object. Okay, let's move it over here, say. And next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to solidify this. And I'm going to make it thin, a lot thinner than that. I'm going to add in two subsurface divisions, but I'm going to select this outer edge and this thing and this one shift e and do that move this up all right and finally what we can do is we can use the new sculpting brush and i'm going to add in some loop cuts over here to make this a square and i'm going to increase this to say three cuts it is a tissue paper so there we go, that's, that's actually pretty good. Sculpting mode, use the sculpting brush. And just try to distort it a little bit. Just on the edges. I'm going to move it up, control 1, to add in one more subsurface division. Move it up, and the solidify modifier needs to be even thinner. And finally, some bit of work. So just select this, wireframe mode. I'm going to select everything, scale, Y, scale it down a little bit. Move everything down over here. Yeah, that looks decent enough. All right, so next thing that I'm going to work on is this bit. So I'm just going to add in a cube scale it down over here move it up and i'm trying to match this top edge so this top edge with this back one so yeah don't really worry about anything else scale it down okay i'm gonna scale it up in the y direction sorry x direction for me move it over here and make sure that it's actually reaching that so press numpad delete select this and all right, that seems nice enough. 
I need to do the bottom bit as well. So just select that and move that down. And now the sizing is off. So it's around here. Okay, so then I'm gonna do origin to geometry. So that will center this origin. Shift S and cursor to select it as well. And now I have some problems. We need to punch some holes in, well, a flat surface. And that can cause all bits of problems with geometry and whatnot. So the easiest way to do this is to just select everything. And I'm gonna first add in this thing over here. So what that will do is this will give me two surfaces that are, well, almost squares. So I can just deal with that, right? I'm gonna delete all of these. So just delete, sorry, delete all of these faces. And that will also delete these vertices over here. And then I'm gonna add in a mirror modifier. So this will mirror this thing over here. And I'm gonna also enable clipping. So what clipping does is I can just move it like this. Okay, and then bisect is also a nice thing to have. But you know, it doesn't really matter in this case. All right. I'm going to select this, make sure that there is no other geometry in wireframe mode. And then I'm going to just add in a couple of subsurface divisions. So just right click and subdivide. That's actually a lot easier. Not subsurface divisions, just subdivisions. Well, that recording got rudely interrupted. Okay, so I remade this thing. So it might be a bit different than what you saw a few seconds ago. Anyway, so let's make these circles right now. Um, the easiest way to do this is just to select one circle over here and control plus. And I am going to do control plus again. So actually, no, let's, let's just stick with that. Let's stick with say these ones. I'm going to right click it, loop tools, circle. Loop tools is a free add on that you should definitely have. And now I'm going to scale it and move it around so it matches this area. So I'm trying to match this outside, so like the outside edge. So move it here, scale it up, move it here. Next up, I'm going to dissolve these faces. And then I'm going to press I to inset. And I think I'm going to call it here, basically. I'm going to se select these, press E, and move it in. Let's see what happens if I, well, subdivide it. But before I subdivide it, I need to add in a bevel modifier. So bevel modifier and then subdivision surface. Change this to angle and increase the number of segments over here. Do something like that. And let's increase the viewport subdivisions to something more. Uh, three. So I'll keep it at two, but for the render, I'm going to change it to something like four. Okay, and finally, I can shade it smooth and come here and turn on auto smoothing. All right, and then my other problem is this thing. So I'm going to move it to the left a little bit and then select this inner circle, control plus, control plus, control plus. So basically, I'm not trying to select these. I'm just trying to select the inner one, but I can't control minus now because this edge is kind of messing with the math. So I have to control Z instead and then move it along the X axis. So it's over here. Nice and simple. This tiny bit down here and that is insanely easy to make, but I am going to be using loop cuts for this. So let's just add one here. Going to add another one. Just going to slide this one over. Don't add geometry when you don't really need to. Select this and extrude it in. Here we go. All right, so for this jar, mug, container, whatever this is, I'm going to select this edge over here just to give me a hint of which one to select out of all of these. So it's this one. And I'm going to turn on proportional editing with O and make sure that this is smooth. G, Z, and okay, so right now everything is moving, so scroll in, and that will let me do this. So just make sure that you only select these. All right. Um, that's not enough geometry, so I am going to add a couple more loop cuts over here. So let's just add in two more loop cuts to all of these. 
just the ones that I want to move. So this one, G, Z, and make sure that proportional editing is on. G, Z, and move it in. There we go. Now, I do want to move this bit back up just over here. Okay, and then I want to make this shape. And that is, well, it's kind of hard to make and it's easy to make at the same time. So the easiest thing to do is just to extrude this up and realize that this is a curved shape that goes, well, That is supposed to be something like this. But obviously it's more subdivided. So if I do subdivide this over here, um, it will kind of mess with the entire geometry. So to fix that, I'm going to add in a bevel modifier, move this thing up and limit it with angles. And this will cause some problems over here. So what you can do to fix that is select these bottom edges. So this one and the other one as well. So both of these bottom edges. And you need to press I. And then you can press. And then you can press F3 or spacebar depending on what your settings are. And poke faces. This search menu comes up with either F3 or spacebar depending on how you set up Blender when it first asks you. All right, and what I'm gonna do right now is just select these two edges over here and move them up a little bit. In all honesty, I'm just gonna get into top view and move them out just by looking at it. Making sure that I can actually select these faces, so just these two, and I'm gonna just bevel them. Do something like that. Alright, so I tried a bunch of things and nothing really fixed it. So I am going to just add in one loop cut over here to kind of force it to fix itself. Um, remember that there is still, well, this problem over here. And that might be fixed by changing this from sharp to patch or even arc. Yeah, arc fixes it. There we go. So there's the tooth brush thingy majiggies, the separators or whatever it's called. Next up, we actually need the toothbrushes. Should we do that in another video? This is way over 20 minutes already. All right, so hopefully next video we'll finally be done with modeling everything. We're just missing these toothbrushes and some objects over here. Oh, we're also missing the towel and everything back here. Okay, so it might not be just one more video. Okay, so in all honesty, I don't think it's going to be just one more video either. Uh, I'm expecting at least two more because making all of those tiny objects, like those tiny little thingies, uh, that takes time if I'm teaching that to people. Like if I'm teaching you step by step how to make something, it's going to take some time, especially toothbrushes. Toothbrushes may look simple, but oh my god, they're impossible to make. Okay, 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 enough, enough with that, just end the video, Vasek. Uh, so if you somehow managed to watch this video without watching any of my older ones in the series, like, why are you even here? Go to my channel, go watch those. Uh, also, if you're looking forward to the next one, maybe you should subscribe, you know, just so you get the notification thingy majiggy when I actually publish it. I promise the next video is gonna be, well, part of this series. If it's not, hey, surprise video. Who doesn't like surprise videos? Anyway, I'm out. Thanks for watching and have fun.